What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. So I wanted to do things a little bit different this week. So usually on this channel we recreate just random objects we find online and we just recreate them as our own 3D models. Now we're still going to be doing that, but lately a lot of the videos have been just larger in scale or a bit complex and they can definitely be challenging for new artists, specifically when you're new to Maya and Substance Painter. So I wanted to make this week's video more targeted towards beginner artists, specifically with Maya and Substance Painter. So I was looking around online trying to figure out what I wanted to create for this week's model. And I came across these images on Amazon and on Google and on eBay. And I thought a little oil can like this would be a great model for a beginner to recreate. Not only is it just a fairly easy model, it's pretty straightforward, it's not too complex in shape. But I feel like we can also cover a wide variety of things in a fairly short amount of time. I didn't want to spend too long on this week's video, especially because we're doing it in real time. So I thought something like this would be perfect. And this also just looks like a lot of fun to texture with all these dirty grease marks. So it should be a lot of fun when we jump into Substance Painter. So without further ado, let's just jump into it and we can start our modeling. So as you can see, this whole shape is basically a rectangle. There's not anything too complex. So that's what we're going to start off with. I'm going to go up to a cube up here and I can just basically create a cube in my scene. Now you can import an image plane if you wanted to model it based off of specific dimensions. Now we're not going to do that. I find it just good practice just to play around with your proportions anyways. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start scaling this in, pretending that this is the can that I'm looking at. So I'm not going to worry too much. We can always refine it later, but I just want something that's roughly the shape of the can I'm looking at. So let's just say that's fine. I'm not going to stress too much. So. Next on our list is basically adding some bevels because it's too square. So I'm going to double click these edges around. I'm going to go up to Edit Mesh and add a small bevel. Now I'm going to increase those segments. Now depending on how many polys you want, is really de depends on how your model is going to be used. So we can go over a few different things, a lower poly oil can and a higher poly more realistic oil can. And it's really up to you as an artist to decide how you want to go about this. In this case, for this video, I just like grading things that look kind of realistic. So we're going to create this thing a little bit higher polys, but we'll go through both along the way. So now that I have a beveled can that looks similar to my oil can, I'm just going to thicken it up a tiny bit more. I have a couple tools docked on the top of my menu here, and I frequently go and use these tools. So right before we actually start continuing modeling, I'm just going to really quickly go over some of these. So I did add center pivot, which you can find up here, modify center pivot. And if you want to dock anything up here, you can just hold control and shift and it just appears up here. So we're just going to delete that one. But I have center pivot, delete history, uh, show all because we're going to hide some objects in our scene. Freeze transformations. You can find a lot of these under here. Freeze transformations, edit, delete by type history. I have this align tool, which I find very, very handy. And that is under modify snap align and align objects. Now you just have to make sure if you hit this little square, world X, Y, and Z are checked on and it's aligned to last selected object. And this is important. So if I have a cube in my scene and I want to align it perfectly for this, I can shift select that and hit that align tool and it will appear right into the middle of it. And I also have my UV editor, which they removed in Maya 2024. Well, didn't remove it, just removed it from the row up here, but you can find that in your UV editor under the UV tab. I also have my 3D cut and sew UV tool, which is at the very bottom down here. And I also have smooth and hardened edges, these two. So as you can see, we added some bevels and then we're getting some hard edges. So we're gonna use our smooth tool. I'm gonna select those edges and we can smooth out those edges. So now it's nice and round. All right, cool. We have our can already basically made. So next up is I want to add that small little edge that's on the top and the bottom. So we're going to add an edge loop. So let's click on our object. We're going to increase this number of edges to two. And then I can just scale those to move them up to the top of and bottom of my model. Now you don't have to worry about it too much, how close those are. You can always adjust it along the way. So what we're going to do is select those faces around those edges. And we can go control E to extrude them. Now, if I start extruding right now and scaling it, they will scale upwards because it's aligned the axis of orientation to objects. So we're going to control Z that and change that to component. 
And if I double click these, it's gonna actually stay on one and it's not gonna actually scale up, which is gonna help us in this situation. This is what we want. So we're gonna scale those out. I want it to be even around or fairly even. And let's just do something like that. And as you can see, it actually isn't working like I wanted it to, which is strange. So, easy fix, we're gonna go over to the side view and select all these UVs, or sorry, these vertices, and I can just scale them to be nice and flat. Same with this top. Now that component tool usually works. I'm not gonna control Z at all to figure out why, so we're just gonna move along and go with this for our can. So it doesn't really look like a can too much yet, and that's just because it's really low in poly. So I hit three on my keyboard to smooth, just to see what it looks like. As you can see, they're bending, and it's it kind of looks like a can, but we're not quite there yet. So what we're gonna do on the top here is just start attaching some of these vertices. So I'm gonna use this multi-cut tool that's right on the top of my menu, and we can start attaching some of these. And I've hit G, I can just repeat that same tool. So that's what I'm gonna keep doing here. And we wanna ideally have everything in quads. Now, triangles are okay, but quads are the best. Ideally, that's what you wanna have. So that's what we're gonna use. So there, we have our topology a little bit cleaner on the top. And the bottom, I'm just gonna cut a few corners here. We're just gonna delete that. I'm going to select this edge and I'm gonna control E to extrude it and we're gonna merge to the center. Now this is gonna give me a bunch of triangles. Yes, it's not perfect. We should probably do it like the top, but I just wanna show you that you're really gonna have the exact same result. It's just going to look a lot cleaner on the top than it does with all these triangles. All right, so it's looking a bit better. We're still not there. So let's press one to unsmooth it. Let's go back into here. And what we want to add is just a little supporting edge on the top and the bottom. So we're not getting that rounded effect, curving effect in the geometry. So there's a few ways you can add a multi-cut tool similar like how we did before and hold uh, control and you can just basically put those wherever you want. But a better way, in my opinion, just because we want them to be even on both sides and just add an edge loop, insert edge loop, add two, and then we can scale them. That way they're gonna be even in exactly the same distance away on both the top and the bottom. So let's put them there and let's press three to smooth again. And as you can see, we have a harder edge now on the bottom. And that looks better. That looks close to our can. Now, one thing is this bump is a little bit too big. So let's select these faces and let's go back to component and we can just scale those in just a tad. And let's hit three now, and that looks a, little, a bit better. So if you look on the very top, if I unsmooth this, it basically goes in a bit. So that's what we're gonna do, we wanna create that indent. So let's select all of these faces on the top. Let's control E, and we can extrude those downwards to create that little lip that's on the top. Now I'm guessing the same effect's gonna happen. So let's hit three, and as you can see, it's bending inwards. And we don't want that. As you can see, there's a harder edge in our reference photo. So let's unsmooth that, let's double click this edge and let's give it a small bevel. So we're gonna make this quite small, a fraction, let's drag that slider down. Now if you hit three, just those alone really help. Now one thing I'm noticing, it's a little bit thicker and ours is looking really thin. So let's select all of these edges, or sorry, faces. And we can switch our axis of orientation to object. And let's just scale this in a bit. So we want to thicken up those edges. If I hit three now, it's looking a bit better. I think that's maybe possibly too thick. Let's go back a little bit. We can play it around with the model until it looks more accurate. So, it's coming together, but I think we're still looking a bit... Let me open up some reference here. Well, it's looking pretty good. It's just looking a little bit round. So what I wanna do is add one. So we're gonna use this multi-cut tool and holding control, I'm gonna put one directly in the middle. And actually, because I'm manually 
placing this in the middle, it's not actually going to be perfectly in the middle. So we can actually go up to the edge loop, uh, mesh tools, insert edge loop, and put that to one, and it will put it perfectly in the middle. So if we hit three, it's going to strengthen that up a bit more, and it's going to be more squared rather than perfectly round. And I think that looks actually a lot better. Now, I feel like we can have a little bit more depth on the top. So let's go back to the top, select these edges or faces, and we can just drag them down a bit more. All right, and that's looking pretty good. Now I want to add one more stronger edge on the inside here. So let's just go with the multi-cut tool and let's insert one roughly in the middle and hit three again. And that's looking good. We have our oil can. Now, if you were going to create a lower poly model, you obviously don't need to do all of this. And here, let me actually show you really quickly. So if you were going to create a high and low poly model, let's say for a video game or something like that, you can basically just go ahead and UV this, which we will do soon. You can duplicate one over. Don't move it over, leave it in the same world space, but I'm just moving it over to show you the difference. And you could basically go through, remove all of these extra bevels that we have or extra edge loops, sorry, to strengthen up those edges. And you could do something even like this, let's say. And then we can smooth out this object. So this one will have a lot more polys on it and this will be our low poly one. And when you bring this into Substance Painter, you can just load this object in and then load this in the settings when you're gonna bake out your textures as your high poly model. That way it's going to use all the information of the smooth bevels we have on this topology and it's going to transfer that over to our low poly shape. And this will have much less polys in video game and it will run very efficiently. Whereas this would take up a lot more performance and it's not ideal for a video game unless it's going to be right up close and it's going to be a main character oil can that they're using frequently then maybe it's okay. But this high and low poly workflow is very beneficial for video games. So that's how I would go about it. Now we're not gonna do that because it's gonna increase the length of our video and I don't have a lot of time today. So we're gonna remove our low poly one, but I wanted to quickly go over that. But we're just gonna use our high poly. So as you can see, there is a cap that we need to have. So what we're gonna do is just delete those. We're gonna, sorry, press one, unsmooth, unpreview, smooth it. And I thought it'd be cool to actually add a cap into our lid. So what we could do if you wanted to create a really low poly model is just insert a little cylinder and this can act as your cap and you can maybe put this over here and then add a little lid like we're going to do soon. And this could easily add or act as your oil can cap and you're not going to see that bevel and how it's attached. And it's not really important. However, in this case, we want to do that, add that little detail. So I'm just going to remove that and we need to add some extra edge loops so I can basically create a circle, some circle faces or some faces that go into a circle shape that we can extrude. So let's go up to our edit mesh tab. Let's go down to insert edge loop and let's add one directly in the middle. And maybe let's add one, let's slide one over. Now the only problem with moving one over is that this, if I smooth it out, technically this side's going to be, uh, you can't really tell, but this side curves more because it has an extra strengthened edge. So we want to be careful where we start playing these because you can start deforming your shape and it can look different on both sides. So in this case, when I'm adding edge loops, I like to make them equal on both sides. That way the whole shape looks proportioned and it looks a little bit more accurate. All right, so what we're gonna do is add two more edge loops instead of the one. That looks good. And we're going to connect these over to here. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna create some more polys on these top faces so I can use my circularize tool and basically create a circle from some of these faces. Now by doing that, I did add some triangles here. That's not a big deal. And to be honest, what we can actually do is just, if it really bugged you and you want to have quads, we can just remove those. And now we have four-sided faces. 
but triangles are okay. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. All right, so what we're gonna do now, before anything is actually quickly saved because we've had crashes in the past and crashes are not fun and you lose all your work and it's very demotivating. So remember to save. All right, so now I'm gonna select these faces that we created and using that circularized tool, we are going to create a circle. Now you need enough edge loops to create this. If I just did this with two squares, it kind of works, but it's not gonna work that well. So make sure you have enough topology. So when you hit the circularized tool, it can actually create a nice shape. Now it looks like it's fairly close to this edge, so I'm gonna keep it on this side, but not too close. And like I said, we can always move it around afterwards. It's not a big deal. But let's just increase the size a bit. Let's drag it back. And let's do something like this. So what we can do is extrude these faces now upwards. And we can create our little oil can. So there's a tiny little, basically these faces, I'm gonna control Z that and I'm actually gonna make it a bit smaller. And we can delete that top face. So we're gonna have a cap on top, so it doesn't really matter. Now what we wanna do, if we preview smooth this, it's going to do the same thing and make it nice and curved, which we don't want. We actually wanna strengthen up these edges so there's a hard edge. So let's double click or select all those edges, go up to mesh, edit mesh, and go bevel. Let's increase the segments to two and let's drag this nice and tight. That way when we hit three, it's a nice tight bevel. Now I believe it's not that tight. So what we're gonna do is just smoothen that out to give it a tiny bit of a curve, which it looks like the reference has. And let's just select this top edge and drag it up a bit more. All right, we have our oil can looking more like an oil can. So now we just have to create our lid. Now the lids are different in different references, but they look kind of the same. So what we're gonna do is just create a cylinder. Let's drag this up and let's position that over our lid. Now it doesn't have to be perfect right now. Don't worry about it. Let's just get it roughly into position. And then we can scale that down to fit a little more snug with our hole that we have. So there's different ways you can go about this, but what we are going to do is basically just delete the top and bottom faces. We're gonna select that front edge and I am going to basically, actually we're just gonna do this a bit easier. I'm just gonna come up once, extrude, Go up again and then using this I can just extrude it again and go merge to the point. So basically all I did was just add one edge loop so we could have just left our faces all together and just added one edge loop. I just decided to go like this because I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do this. Now it looks like the bottom is a little bit wider so we're actually going to drag that out and then I can scale extrude and scale that inwards. So basically, I just have a shape that's looking like this right now. And it doesn't look like a cap yet, but we have to play around with the shape a bit more. So what we're gonna do, let's select this. We are going to bevel it just to create a couple more, three edges. And what I'm gonna do is actually slide this one down a bit more. Let's double click all of these and let's extrude them outwards. Looks like that there's a nice bump on the bottom. So I'm just gonna create this lip. Like I said, you don't have to go crazy into detail with this, but I'm gonna add a couple of edge loops to strengthen up these edges. Something like this. Let's bring these top ones up a bit more. Now I kept these edges here because we wanna add some nice indents. So there's a little ring, a loop that goes around. Now we're not actually going to make it work like it does in real life. We're going to cut some corners and just add that effect. So we're just going to add bevel. I can increase those edges. Let's select all of those faces. Actually these two we can pull up a bit more. Let's select all of those and let's give them a small bump. So let's just extrude them. Let's go to component and let's just drag them out. Drag them in a bit. When we hit three, it's gonna create those little small rivets or bumps that you see on them. Now those are a little bit big, so let's just go back and control Z. 
and just drag those back in a bit. It's looking better. Then we just have to worry about the top. So now I'm deciding if basically currently debating with myself if I want to add that into the geometry or not. And it might actually be fun to actually add that into the geometry. So maybe we should. So what we're going to do before anything is just give this a small bevel. And then we smooth it out. And get the shape. Now, I'm not quite happy with this, so we're gonna have to play around with things a bit. I think this is tapered too much. We can go to the side view. Let's just drag these in. a bit better and then what I want to do is basically the nice bump on the tops so what you're actually seeing it real time as I'm adjusting things so what we're gonna do is actually select these edges I'm gonna drag them outwards I want to create a nice bump on the top because that's our main cap like I said the reference is all showing different things online so Depends what reference you're looking for, or looking at, sorry, but we're gonna go with something like this. I'm just gonna create a nice bevel on each of these edges. We're actually just on the top. And that looks better. We can just shrink our cap to be a little more snug. And we don't want that poking through, so it's lower. Maybe. Something like that should work. Now in Substance Painter, we can add those tiny bumps around the edges if we wanted to. In this case, it might actually be cool here. Let's just experiment. So we're just gonna duplicate one over so I can come back to this. And I'm gonna isolate this. What I'm gonna do is go Mesh Smooth. Let's increase those polys. Let's get, actually, let's make it quite high. Let's go two, that might look cool. And we don't need all these faces up here, so let's just delete, delete. A really quick way is just go mesh, separate, and you can select those faces and remove them. We just don't need all of those. Select these outside edges, circularize to fix, oh, to fix that edge. Make it nice and round. And the reason why I did this is we just really quickly wanted to experiment with um, some extrusions. So, what I was thinking we could do now, like I said, we're probably just going to add them in Substance Painter, but this might be a fun, different way of doing it. So I don't want to mess around with this bevel too much, but what I want to do is basically start on this edge. I, as you can see with the reference, looks like it kind of goes halfway through that top beveled edge where this little extrusion is. So. Let's just do it like this. So you can manually go through, which is gonna take a bit of time. But just for the sake of this little mini tutorial, I thought it'd be fun to just go over it quickly so we kind of tackle everything. So obviously I'm doing this just very quickly and it's hard because I'm not doing it all around. It's easier when they're all the way around. But if you smooth that, you're actually gonna create a bump effect into the lid, which I kind of like. And it looks like it's actually a lot more in real life. So for the sake of this, let's actually go back. Let's crease some even again. Just, I don't know. Let's say we're going for a photorealistic. That looks better. So to not complicate this, let's just delete some of these edge loops to make our life a little bit easier. And you can start basically double clicking all of your faces. Now it's easier to do with less polys because you have less faces to select and you won't mess it up as much. But I actually think it looks kind of cool. So what we're gonna do is just really quickly go around and double click all of these. So I'm not gonna make you watch this, so I will speed up this portion of the video 
and we'll come back to when all of these faces are selected. All right, so we have all of those faces selected. Yes, that was very tedious, and no, you don't have to do that. You can easily add these rivel, all these little bump effects in Substance Painter. But if you're going for something obviously for more like photorealistic, these little details can actually go quite a long way with how your models look. So what we're gonna do is just extrude those faces outwards. Let's unpreview the smooth. Let's go to object and we can just extrude those. Now when we hit three on our keyboard, we get a bunch of these small little bumps and it looks really cool. It looks realistic. It looks similar to one of the references I'm looking at. Now it is a little bit strong. So what we can do is just unsmooth this. We can go ahead and just remove some of these bevels, especially on the bottom here. That way when I hit three, now this is very high in polys obviously. So we don't need nearly all of these polys. So let's go ahead and just select some of these edges and remove them. And this is why it's important to really make your main shape in a low poly form first and that way you don't have to come back like I am here and starting to remove edges and it just creates a lot of extra work so make sure your low poly model is good to go before you start smoothing things and your life will just be easier. All right so it's looking a bit better now what we want to do is just basically delete all of these top faces. In my reference it looks like it comes in um, quite smoothly at the top. So I want to select this edge, drag this upwards so we have a nice curve. And then I can extrude that inwards and merge to the center. All right, so that's looking good. Now what you can do is just honestly go through and delete a lot of these edges that we don't need because there's so many of them since we smoothed them out. So. When you go and re-smooth this, you're basically just not going to have a million polys. Now this is with that lower poly model that we created earlier, you can really create a nice high and low poly model workflow just from those shapes. All right, it's looking good. Now we just need to create one extra edge loop on the top here. So as you saw, if we are smoothing this, I am going to get these weird stretches going inwards and that's just because we have no supporting edge on the top. So let's go ahead and delete those top faces. Let's just extrude it in once to give a supporting edge and then we can extrude again. That way now there's a hard edge there and then once we smooth it, it's going to look a lot better. All right, so we have our oil cap basically complete. Now I don't like how much this is flaring out. I'm looking at other references and they aren't flaring out as much and I kind of like that. But we, what we can do is go mash smooth to add that smooth to it. That looks cool. Now like I said this is obviously crazy high in polys and in most cases that's not important. So what we're going to do is actually create another oil can after this and one's gonna have a lower poly cap and then we can kind of just play around with both and see which one we like better. But I think that's looking good for our oil can. It shows you how quickly you can throw one together. So for the sake of this to make it more interesting, let's just group this one together. Well, we can select all of those and just delete history, but let's just, no, this is our low poly one. So let's just group all of those together and call it maybe Oil can 01 for our first can. Center that pivot. We're gonna come back to this. Obviously, it's probably good to UV this before we start duplicating it. So for good habit's sake, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna select this object and let's just add that smooth to it because we want it to be smooth, which looks really nice. We can add only one division. We don't really need more. And it's nice to actually go through, in my opinion, and clean up the topology afterwards. That creates, always smooth, creates a couple of unnecessary edges, in my opinion. And you can just remove a few out of your scene. Now, as you can see, our top topology looks great. 
everything squads. This is looking messy because remember, we just merged them all to the center and you can see it quickly gets destroyed. Now we're not gonna worry about that, but it's always good to make your topology as clean as possible. Um, just good habit to get into as well. So keep that in mind when you're creating your models. Now we can remove that inside one since we don't need it. Yeah, I think that looks good for our can. Now, if we're going for definitely like real realism, just like our lid, it's probably worth smoothing this out into two divisions. Just that way you create more polys, but we don't want to do that. You can even create it and smooth it out once again. And that way you're gonna get like truly smooth geometry and you're not gonna have those edges. I think that's possibly an overkill for what we're doing. I don't know. Looking at it now, it might be cool to add those extra meshes. So you know what? Because we're going for photo reel, it's two, two things. One's gonna be lower poly and one's gonna be higher. So let's just smooth this out. This will be our high poly. Our high poly can, which I think will be cool. And let's quickly go ahead and UV this. So I'm gonna open up my UV editor. Now bear with me here, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place. It's, I'm kind of winging this along the way. There's no structure to this tutorial. I'm kind of just creating it. So deciding how we're gonna go about this along the way. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of have two different higher topology, like one higher polys, one lower polys. We can actually see what they look like in Substance Painter and compare them. So this will be our higher one. Let's go ahead and quickly UV this. So we're gonna go UV, camera base to remove all of those cuts. Let's make sure our history is deleted. Actually, we don't wanna do that. What I'm gonna do, before we delete history, I know we should, but I wanna unsmooth it. So let's just keep that as is. Let's go ahead and just add, using our 3D cut and sew UV tool, which is under the UV tab, right click component edge, and let's start creating our cuts where we want them. So I'm gonna create one along our top here. I'm gonna cut one right on the inside there. Let's cut one on the very top here. One on the very bottom. Actually, that might be problematic. Let's go a little bit lower. That way it looks like the metal goes right to that edge. That's probably fine. So we'll keep our bottom as is since we're not adding any important detail. Our top, we'll leave that as is. And on the very back, let's add one seam up the side. So if I go over here to our UV editor, go right click to your UV shells, select those UV shells, go control U to unfold them, which is up here as well. It's under tools unfold. And then we're going to control L to lay them out. So what we're gonna do is this is our main shell. This needs to be straight because we're gonna add some graphics. So under the, under the unfold tab, we're gonna go straight in UVs. And this is important. So all of those UVs are nice and straight. So like I said, later on substance planner, when we apply that texture, it's gonna make life just that much easier because everything's gonna be straight. Now we're not adding any important labels on these. So we can just roughly change the orientation to make them align better and we can go control L to lay them all out. Let's hit this little second button over here to turn them all blue, just easier to look at. If you hit on a checkered board pattern, you can see how everything is nice and straight and it's UV'd correctly. And now we can apply our materials very easily later on in Substance. So now that our first oil can is done, I wanna reuse this shape. So what we're gonna do is just duplicate this over. It's gonna be our lower poly can to compare it to. So let's take our high poly lid that we have and let's just delete that. This will be our low poly lid. And I do want it to be a, look a little bit better than that. So I'll just smooth it once. Let's go in, get that checkered board, delete these top and bottom faces. Let's just merge those together. I like to do that just to clean it up a bit. We can remove some of these edges we don't need. All right, and this will be our low poly lid. Lower poly lid, still relatively high, but it's a lot better than clearly this one. So let's delete our low poly in that group. So now we have two, one that has those rivets built into it, which is obviously nice to look at. And then this one, which we will add later on in substance. 
Now this is too high in polys, so let's try the new unsmooth tool from Maya. Let's see how it works. Oh, it looks awesome. So then we just unsmooth it, so now we can go back and delete our history. I wanted to keep that smooth history on so we can unsmooth it from this shape. Now that's still looking a bit high, so let's just go ahead and start removing some of these extra faces, actually. Or sorry, edge loops, but the majority of them are actually gonna keep anyways. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so that's our lower poly can. This is our higher poly can. And for our high poly can, let's have some fun with this. We're gonna create some more edge loops. Call me crazy. And let's add two in the middle on each side so we can add some cool small indents. So what we can do is basically select an edge, hit B on my keyboard to have the soft select tool created. And if I hold B down and click and drag, you can basically choose how many all these you want to interact with. So we're not going to go all the way to the edge up here. I don't want that to be affected just a little bit lower than that. So let's do something like this. We can slowly just bring some in and this is going to create some cool um, effect like it's you know used and it's warped and dented in a little bit from the years so the more you do this the better it's going to look and you don't want it to look too too crazy but let's just add a small one on this edge and maybe one over here very subtle that's looking nice maybe let's add a couple more just because we're having fun, why not? So pretend something happened down here, like it was dented. Sometimes you can create a little story, like let's say this was dropped at one point. It has a nice little dent in the corner. A couple little indents from, you know, those mechanics dropping their oil in the shop. Something like that would look cool. And since we're here, let's also, uh, now we'll leave the lid. Cool, so we have our high poly one and we have our low poly one. Now we're not gonna add those indents into this because we have no extra geometry. We're gonna do that into the material and substance painter and you can compare both later on and see. Well, you can make up your own mind, decide which one looks better to you. So what we're gonna do is just select a couple more of these and I'm just gonna squish them. Select these edges, hit that soft select, and add a little bump there as well. Cool, that looks nice. And those are our two oil cans. Just like that, we have two created. Now, we want to have a few different shapes in our scene. So, I think it'd be cool to have like a bunch of different old school cans together in the same scene. So, let's call this our low poly at one and this is our high poly one okay so we can have a few different cans here so there's a few things we have to uv still our lids so let's open these folders let's get our lid drag that out we don't need that in its own folder unnecessary Okay, so let's go to our lid and let's quickly UV this thing. So we are just going to do the exact same thing. We're gonna do a camera based projection and then let's just do a quick save, obviously. I'm using that 3D cut and sew UV tool. Let's go up to edge and let's basically make this easy. Let's do one cut along the bottom and one cut along the top. And then we'll just do one cut down the side. That way, when we go to our shells and we unfold them, control U and then control L, we can lay those bad boys out and they look good. So let's just control L, lay those out. That looks great. So we select our high poly, we can select all of those shells. And let's just scale this down. 
We don't need to take up all of that space for these metal strips. Let's just fit these into our scene. And throw him there. Let's throw you there. Let's throw you inside. Cool. We'll do something like this. We have a lot of room to work with, and it's really nice to always try to use your whole UV space, but this will do for the sake of that tutorial. Now let's go to our low poly one, and let's do the exact same thing. So let's go delete history, freeze transformation, center pivot, which is important, and then we can go UV, camera based. I'm using that 3D cut and sew UV tool. Let's do the exact same thing. One cut on the bottom, one cut on the top, and one cut down the side. Let's just move this to the side, select our low poly can. Oh no, something. Oh, our lid, Let's just fix that. Unfold our lid. And we can position this into our scene. And let's just fit these into our map. Now I'm just going to position this so it's inside. Perfect. Now we should straighten this technically, so let's just save it and let's go ahead and straighten UVs. It's always nice to straighten your shells whenever you can. Not only is it easier for you to add some detail later on, but this is very important for this specific shape because it's low poly and we want to add those small rivets along the top here. Well, they need to be straight, otherwise they're not going to show straight on our model later on in Substance. So that is one thing that we had to do. Straighten that shell. Now everything's looking good. Now let's just enlarge this to take advantage of all that empty space. All right. And just like that, our two oil cans are complete. So like I said, I did want to have a few extra ones. So let's use our high poly ones because I know it's going to look a tad better. Let's just duplicate this over, scale this one down. Let's pretend that this is a smaller can. You can just eyeball this. Now a little trick if you're zooming in and this is obviously out of view and you're like, oh, how do I drag it up and down? If you hold your middle mouse button, click in while holding shift. You can actually drag it sideways or you can drag it, hold shift, click your middle mouse button up and down and you can do that as well. So you don't need to see that, this little, what are these called, axis, your cursor, I don't know, I forget the name of it, but you don't need to see this actually up here. You can do it out of view and you can mess around with it all you want by controlling, holding shift and clicking in your middle mouse button and then dragging it whichever direction you want. Anyways, little. We're gonna create another smaller oil can as well. And let's start just positioning our scene. So we're gonna have a couple oil cans. Let's do one here. Let's do this guy. Maybe a little turn to this. Like our low poly one can be behind that. Let's duplicate this oil can as well. And let's flip it around. Maybe have one like this. What do you think? And to make it a bit more interesting, actually, I don't want to just add this one like it's piled up together. Let's actually add one more. So there's other like old oil. Basically, there's like a grease one I'm looking at in this reference photo. And we're just going to create another shape, just to make it a bit more interesting. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it with a circle. It can kind of like a, a paint can kind of shape. So let's do the exact same thing we just did. Let's just insert our edge loop. We can switch that to two number of edges, and we can just scale those up and down to create those top and bottom little edges. Now we're going to do this fairly quickly. 
So let's extrude those, switch over to components, which it should do. I don't know why this isn't working for this specific shape. Maybe this, there we go. And let's go ahead, select those that top face, and we're gonna actually keep this in our scene. So let's go do extract to separate it. So if I go center pivot, and then we have our lid. And the only reason why I wanna do this is because we want it to sit in the exact same position. So we can just extrude them downwards. And it looks like these kind of go like this. So let's just delete this top face. So let's start playing around with this shape. So this kind of goes in. Actually, let's do this. We'll create that bevel afterwards. A little bump. And basically just creating like a lid shape, like a paint can sort of. Now I noticed that this has like a nice bevel to it. So let's do like that. These edges are all beveled. So hit G on my keyboard to repeat the last tool. And we can make that nice and round. And then these edges are a bit more strong. Kind of like that, that will do. I think that works. What do you think? Maybe we'll bring these in a bit more. It's like there's a, almost a lip on it so you can peel up that lid. All right, that should do. Now, same thing we did back here, just like we did to our first objects. Let's add a little supporting edge there. And, oh, let's put that to two. We can add two more they're really close. So that way when we hit three, it smoothed out that can and it looks good. So what I want to do is just create a little bit more, like this needs to be wider. So we're just going to scale that bigger. That looks nice. And let's scale these ones in now. So this can go down and in a bit. And that should, I'll just scale this in just a tiny bit. So we're gonna hide it in there. Give this a nice bevel. And this one a nice bevel. Now like I said, depending on the reference you're using, it's, it will look different. And like I said, this is a grease can technically, I believe, so. I don't know if they're actually like shaped differently than a paint can. It looks like they're almost the exact same. So all I'm gonna do here is just select these faces. So let me. And I just wanna basically drag them in a bit to create a little bit of depth or a little of thickness around that top edge. Now this one can come in. That'd be kind of our paint can. That'd be kind of cool if like it was half up. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of on, but not on. Like it's being used. That'd be kind of fun. Just make it a bit smaller. There we go. Let's exaggerate it a bit. So you can see, that looks cool. All right, so we have our can as well. So let's just go ahead, just like we did our other ones, just add a smooth to it. And I actually wanna add a few edge loops. I'm just gonna randomly place some in here. That way I can do the denting idea because it might actually look cool. Now you could always just do this in your texture. We're gonna do that on our small one, but if you have the ability to do this, or you can get away with doing this, it's obviously gonna look, it always looks a bit better if it's into the geometry. Like it's kind of hard to argue that. Sometimes in a lot of cases, you can't even really tell. So let's ruin that one. Okay, that looks good. So now we can go through and add one more smooth to it. So it looks nice and smooth. We have a couple indents on here. More like a hard indent. So 
Cool. That looks nice. All right, so this will be our can. So let's go ahead and actually I'm just going to see very slightly increase the height just a little bit. All right, let's call it a day here. So what we're going to do is quickly UV this let's go to our UV editor. Same thing as always, delete history, freeze transformation, center pivot. And then we can go UV camera based. Let's isolate this. So we can do a simple cut at the bottom and one at the bottom here. Sorry, the top and the bottom. And then we can add one cut at the back of our scene. All right, so when I go and control U to unfold, control L to lay them out, everything's looking nice. And we can go ahead and straighten those UVs on our large shell. So then in Substance Painter, we can add that graphic and everything's gonna line up perfectly. It's not gonna look all skewed and warped because our UV shell is just angled incorrectly. Now, because it's a higher poly model, it takes just a bit more time for it to finish its job, but it did a great job doing it. So now we can control L, lay them out and let's just quickly do the exact same thing to this. So delete history. Retransformation center pivot UV camera based projection. So don't forget to add a smooth since it's not smooth. We're only previewing smooth and we're going to change those divisions to two since we want it really nice and rounded. And just like before, we can go ahead and delete this mesh separate just to remove those interfaces since we don't need them. That looks great. All right, so we have our aviation. Let's just group this into, oh, there it is. Leave the history, call this um, grease can, sure. And we'll just slide this in a bit more. Okay. So we have our cans, just looking good. Well, maybe we want to just find a fun way to make them sit. So it looks like it's natural or something. That looks fine. We will add one more small one in the back. Or on the side, actually, I mean, that look cool. Like that? What do you guys think? I don't know. I should do these live. That way, you can, I can have your opinions on how I should have our oil cans looking. But I think this looks good. Something just like this. we have our oil cans. Now I just really quickly wanted to show you how quickly you can create your own stuff like this. And it's just basically blocking out that simple shape and then adding those small details. So now that that's all complete and everything is UV'd and looking nice. Oh, except for this is not looking nice. Let's just unfold this extra shell on the back, our lid, which we never did. And then we can just control L and lay them all out. So those are all looking nice as well. Now it depends if you wanted to have repeating textures. So for example, I'm trying to decide if we should have how we should go about this. Maybe we should do our big cans on one map. That looks fine, to be honest. 
that looks great. So let's call this large cans. Let's put these on their own. All I'm doing here is just giving it a little bit of space. Like you have so much extra UV space to work with. So I don't know, we don't have to, but let's group those together. And let's go small cans. And this will be my grease can. And you know what? Let's just add You know what, I think this is going to be fine. Let's just do this and actually it might be fun to let's duplicate this. Let's create a small one. I'll figure out later what this small can is going to be. And we need to just go to our side view. And this is just to make sure that everything is looking flat. And I'll show you in a second what I do to make sure this is. Cool. We have our oil cans. And that looks cool. I think we're gonna create a fun little scene. Now really quickly, like I said, to make sure everything's flat, sometimes I add just a ground plane. And then I'll go into my scene and make sure that everything is lining up to it. So I'll take all of these objects and we can just drag them down. Everything looks like it's nice and flat. So then we can just go into our scene, delete that. And then these grease cans, let's just take the second one, let's freeze. So one thing, to note, and this actually is something important. So we took this original can that we have, which should have freezer transformations. So it thinks it's that shape. So when we duplicate it over and we shrunk this one down, as you can see, the transforms have moved. It's moved its position in the world space. It's actually scale itself small. So all these numbers are different. Now freezing transformation is still very important. So if I freeze them, it's gonna zero out everything. So this is now its size in the real world. It's in this position. It's not in the same position as here. So you're not gonna have any problems. It's always important to freeze your transforms so these shapes aren't moved around. So I didn't do it here on any of these, but it's really important to make sure you do that before exporting. Now let's go back to our grease cans and let's just quickly those now there's lots of extra room so what we're gonna do is just take advantage of that I want this texture to look cool so we can just enlarge it and we can move these over there's lots of room but we're just going to be a little messy not messy but you know anyways it is what it is I think it's fine so let's group all of these together and let's call this our oil can scene. Everything's UV'd, everything is ready to go. The last thing we need to do is just give these textures. So our grease cans. I don't even know if the second one's gonna be grease, but for now we're gonna call that. We can right click, go new material. Now depending on where you're gonna use this is also important. So if it was coming back into Maya, I'd probably set these as the AI standard surface, or if they're going maybe to uh, Unity, need to be blend. I don't know, depending on where, whatever you need it to be. In this case, I'm just gonna set them as blend just for simplicity. So this first one can be large cans. Text for texture. We'll do right click new material blend. And this can be small cans text. Now keep in mind this is actually what I'm gonna see in Substance Painter as my in my layers. So we can go right click new material blend, call this grease cans text. Cool. Now they're all textured. and we are ready to export. 
So let's go ahead and export these. We can jump over to Substance Painter and we can quickly texture these oil cans, give them some gnarly little grease marks. And then we can render out a simple, nice image using V-Ray directly out of Substance Painter just to make our life easy. And obviously you can export those textures and import them into any game engine. And I have a video on my channel if you're interested in seeing how to link up textures specifically in Maya. But for now, we're just gonna use Substance Painter to render out some nice images. And actually really quickly before we export, sorry, there's, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to add a little bit more interesting, I don't know, it looks to everything so straight. So I'm just gonna jump back to like this one, for example, and we're just gonna angle this lid and move it up or down, let's move it up a bit. So it looks like that lid's half on, maybe on this small one. We can also, also do that as well. So the little tiny differences go a long way in helping make it look realistic. I really find, and that's just personal opinion, I guess, but it's always nice to change what you can there and that one's up a little bit more just to make it a bit more interesting. And anyways, same thing. Let's select all of those, freeze those transforms and we can export and let's go do Substance Spinner. And I lied. Actually, there is one tiny little thing I want to do just to help increase the realism. I don't know, to add a little tiny detail and we have all this extra UV space. I'm going to add a small plane and you can just do this directly onto the materials, which we're going to do when we experiment with them. But for now, let's just drag these down to one. And this is gonna add, or act, sorry, as like a sticker for price. I thought it'd be cool to add a little extra detail. So what we're going to do is just basically shrink this down I'm trying to think of which sticker we can use, but we'll worry about that later. Maybe we'll just do like a regular price, like it's. Just up here. And it's, let's add a couple edge loops. We can just take this edge out. So it's kind of curled a little bit. Like it's lifting off, it's kind of half on. This can kind of be in. Let's just mesh, let's just smooth it once so I can add some more polys. And maybe that will work. What do you think? That might be fine. This is going to be your little tiny sticker. And what we can do, uh, we'll add the wrinkles later. So let's just go mesh. Actually, that's fine like that. Freeze transform center pivot, UV, camera based. Camera based is fine as is. Let's just control. We don't need any cuts into this since it's a simple piece of paper. Let's just move this down to the side and this can be part of our small cans group. So we can basically assign that material. So let's go small cans, drag that into our small cans and now we just need to position this in our UV map. Now where and how you do this is up to you but we can take advantage of the space for sure. So let's just move some of these out of the way. All we're doing here is just moving our shells around because we don't need it to take so much space. We just can fill in this empty space here. Now 
I'm doing this very quickly. You can make this look so much better, guys. Honestly, this is kind of embarrassing even filling it up so much, but I think this is going to be fine. I could just do a better job, I feel like, taking advantage of that space, but this will do. Cool. So now if you look, this is looking nice. We have a little sticker that's going to help just add a tiny bit of realism, just to give it that much more little tiny detail or something else to look at. And we're going to do that later on in our textures. We can add those labels directly on, but it's always nice if you can just add it in geometry. All right, so right before we actually start texturing, there's one extra thing I know I never really know when to quit, but I noticed in a lot of the reference, the seams were actually going up the sides of the bottles. So, for example, these large ones that we currently have, we have them kind of going up this side, but it seems like they're actually directly up one side. So I thought just to make it more realistic and to help, we are actually gonna do one quick thing. So let's jump into this model. Let's go to these UV seams. We're gonna undo that one that we created earlier. And let's just go on the side and let's create one here. And what we're gonna do to make it that much more realistic is we are actually going to take these faces. I'm just gonna do something really quickly. Let's just isolate this so it's easier to look at. Let's take those faces and we are just going to extrude them outwards. Now I want there to be a tiny lip on one side. So all I'm going to do now is just go in with my target weld tool. And we're just going to go back and merge one side back in. And this will actually make it look much more realistic. Now you could just do this with a bump. Just add like a fill layer and add a bump and do like a black line down the side, which we will do on our lower poly model. But I thought since we're going this far, why not? Why not create one that's higher poly and has that little edge in there? So we're going to select this other edge as you can see there's a hard edge right now and we don't want that so let's select this one let's hit that soft select soften edge and now we have a soft edge and we have a seam and it looks definitely more realistic at least i think so now our uvs are going to be messed up so let's just save this let's select this shell that we have on the outside since we didn't affect any of the other cuts we just have to re-unfold it Control u and then we can change those Let's straighten those UV shells again. And it's gonna take a, just a bit of time because it's high poly and I have history. So let's delete the history to make everything move better and easier. Let's take this shell and we can shrink it back into place. All right. So now that that's done, we're looking good. What I just want to do really quickly is take these large ones and I just want to like basically reposition them around. Now we have our lower poly ones, which are over here. So let's leave our low poly one alone. I'm just trying to figure out what we did exactly. We had two overlapping. They were just these two. So that's fine. Let's leave our high poly one alone. And let's just rotate it more so we can see that seam. And we are going to do the same thing because I want to do these small ones as well. So we're going to do the exact same thing we just did to the small one. So we're going to go and select one of these edges. Let's bring it more in the middle. Let's extrude that outwards. Let's go in with our target weld tool. And just drag those weld one side back together. Let's double click this one edge, soften it. And let's double click the other edge and we can just bring that in a bit more because it's too far out. And let's drag it over a bit. Perfect. 
I think that is fine. So let's select this edge. Let's really quickly just delete this history. Everything will move quicker. Let's unfold. Let's straighten those UVs again. Now, I do want to change where my cut is. So let's go to our UV cuts. I have it down this side. So let's control and unselect that one. And let's go and add a seam right where that cut is. Now we can re-unfold it. Oh. And we didn't cut it well enough. So let's go into our edge here. And I believe we only cut. There we go. Let's go down. the very bottom too since we have to be easier if I actually make it blue so now if I unfold it should be straight and then we can just straighten those shells again and that's just going to be nicer with our texture too later on in substance painter because I don't have it directly in any of those faces it's just going to look much better all right, so now let's just scale this shell down and let's fit it back into our UV editor. So if we hit this small cans folder, I just want to make sure that it fits close to the other one. And to be honest, it actually, now I'm thinking about it, it doesn't matter because we're gonna, here, let's just do this. Let's just scale it down ourselves. And then we can take this whole can and you know what we're actually just going to leave it because i was going to just duplicate this over to the other side but i want to add that seam and we can compare them in substance painter and just have a little experiment experimentation with how those uh, bump effects work and we'll see if this is really worth adding those polys um, or if it really makes no difference and we'll test it with our big ones as well anyways that's just the last small detail i wanted to add was that little seam and i just wanted to also make sure for these other cans so for this low poly one we had the seam up the side let's just remove that seam holding control and clicking it just to remove it and we are going to add it up the back similar to the other ones so we will have to just grab the shell and unfold it, re-straighten it, and then scale that back down. So now we can have that actual seam there and our UVs aren't gonna look weird on those faces on this side. And since we have this one duplicated over, we wanna have the same kind. Let's just go ahead and just duplicate this and put it into the position of the other one or similar to it. And one small little last um, thing that might help people or might be useful information to anyone out there, but nothing is really perfectly straight in real life. So if you're duplicating cans around, if you want to add that slight more tiny bit of more realism to your scenes is even slightly rotating the objects so nothing is perfect because like I said almost nothing is perfect in real life when you're looking at them when it comes to positions and some stuff is crooked and that little tiny and those little small imperfections go a real long way with how your models look in my opinion so let's do that all right, that is everything, I promise. No more small details. Let's jump over to Substance Painter and we can finally start texturing. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. All right, so what I like to do is just really quickly take a look at your just your UV, your texture set list, just to make sure your UVs are looking good. Now, like I said, we split this up into three, which we probably 
could have definitely like combined in some of these together just because there's so much extra space. However, it still just gives us a lot of room to work with and I think it makes sense for the specific little project that we're doing. So things look good. What we're going to do is go up to mode and I can go bake some maps for my textures. So let's choose our output size. I'm going to go down to 4K and I can check on use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. Now really quickly at the beginning of the video when we made that really low poly can and let's say you that was the main model you're working with, you could actually load in your high poly mesh here. You just don't check on this and you use your high de definition meshes and you can load in that high poly mesh. And if you're looking for that low and high poly workflow, this is exactly where you would import those two meshes. Now, because we're reusing some of these and they're actually sharing the same UV space and they're just rotated, I just want to make sure that I change this match always to by mesh name and same with the ambient occlusion. It's not crazy important, but it's just a small little change you can do. All right, everything is good. So let's just go ahead and bake out those textures. All right, so everything's baked and we are ready to go. So let's return to painting mode and we can start texturing our oil cans. So let's start off with our large cans. I just wanna start off with this main one on the front since it's basically the front of our scene, our high poly one with the large, or the cap with all those little rivets or bumps around them. So this will be a good one to start off with. Now we're gonna use that same reference photo I showed earlier, those red Texaco, or sorry, the Caltex um, motor oil that we're gonna use. So I just jumped on Google and I found the Caltex old logo and I just brought that into Photoshop Basically, it's remove the background so I have this simple logo to work with. And that's this thing right here. So I just basically just save that. It's not even that nice. As you can see, there's a little bit of like, <laughs> I could have definitely cleaned this up in Photoshop, but we're just gonna work with this to try to get through this as quick as we can and hopefully not too quick so people can learn a few things. So like I said, we're gonna start off with this large can. So let's isolate that by hitting this focus mode up here and we can isolate those larger cans. And I want to start off by just basically separating the colors like they are in the reference. So let's start off with adding a fill layer. And let's change this color to more of a red. And we can tweak these later on so it's, you don't have to worry about getting it perfect right off the start, but this will do. Let's right click, set that to a black mask. And let's go over here to our polygon fill tool and let's switch that or actually it's already on polygon fill. So let's just leave it as is and we can start basically texturing our model. So let's start filling in exactly where we want everything to go. So I do know that there's a seam right up the side it looks like. So what we can do is just drag all of those until we get about halfway. And it looks like it's only on the top half as well. So what we can do, it's on the bottom half on the back end. So let's go ahead and just fill those in. And then we can slide the slider, the color slider down to zero if we want to remove it. So we can remove half from this side. Looks like it's kind of in a square pattern similar to this. So we're going to go with that. Now let's go back to our red color and let's just brighten that red up a bit. Like I said, we can come back and mess around with those afterwards. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now we need to add our logo. So what I'm going to do is drag in that logo into my project. I'm going to set that to a texture. Now it's really nice if you create these as your own alphas and then you can just change the colors a lot easier. But we're just going to use a texture, take it right from Google Images and it's just going to make our life easy. So I'm going to keep this layer on here. We can just delete that to make it easy. So let's just add a layer. And let's go over to this projection tool on the left. And if we scroll down, we can drag this image onto our base color. And basically, wherever we paint on here, it's going to show up on our model. So what I like to do is find roughly the, sp the place where I want the logo to go. And it just makes it easier for me to locate in my UV editor exactly, or sorry, my UVs where they are. So we can zoom in and I can roughly just paste on this logo. So I'm just gonna zoom out just to make sure that's roughly the size I want. So I want it a bit smaller. 
I'm gonna move it over there. That's probably a good size. Now let's just move it over to the left a bit more. Even more to the left. Like something like, you just have to play around with it a bit. Let's go even a tad more. I think this will do good. This should be fine. So let's just paint this in. And we have our logo. Cool. So I honestly think it's sitting a bit too low. So what I'm going to do is just control Z that, slide it up a bit, and then repaste it on. All right, I think that looks good. Now what I want to do is add the other words on the bottom. So a lot of times what we're going to do first off, just add another fill layer so we can add set a color to our text. So we want it to be black, Let's set that to a black mask. And a lot of the times what I will do is just use the built in fonts that come with Substance Painter. So if you go over to your alphas and you scroll down, you can find different text here. So you can just click on one or double click on one. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. Oh, I have to go to brush back up to paint mode. You can double click on one and then you can scroll until you see the text and you can change it and stamp that directly on. Now, the problem is that you're very limited with the amount of fonts that you have and you'll find the more you work with Substance Painter and you're trying to, you know, recreate these real life logos and stuff, you're not going to, you're going to find that you're very limited and a lot of times you'll have to jump into Photoshop to recreate your own. So that's what we're going to do really quickly. I'm not going to do a full on tutorial about alphas. I'm going to actually, I'm planning to make one down the road. So we're just really quickly going to jump in here just so I can make one for the Caltex motor oil words that are below. So what I'm going to do is just jump over to Photoshop. So as you can see here, I already pre-made this and I'm going to go over exactly what I did. So what we're going to do is just go file, let's go new. And the only really important thing to know is that it needs to be equal in width and height. So it needs to be a nice square. So this one's just a thousand by a thousand pixels. It really doesn't matter. I believe Substance Painter just auto sizes those when you bring them in. I could be wrong, um, but from my experience, it doesn't really matter too much what sizes you work with. Obviously, if it's very low in pixels, you have less pixels to work with. However, in this case, let's just go with a thousand and a thousand and this will be fine. So. Let's start off by unchecking this. The only thing you need to know about alphas is just everything that shows up in black is not going to be picked up and everything in white you're actually going to be painting with. So that means we need to make our background black. So let's add another layer and what we want to do is start adding some text. So I'm going to use that text from that reference we're using and we want to make sure that our text is in white. And let's add in caps. Caltex. Now Arial, let's do it in bold. I'm not sure actually what font this is, but something like this will work. Now I'll just duplicate that down for the second words below. And this is going to be motor oil. Now it looks like the motor oil is roughly the same size as the Caltex font. So let's just squeeze this smaller to fit the same. And then we can choose whatever spacing we want. So what I'm going to do is lock my background so I can mess around with these. And it's always nice just to center them if you can or make them as big as you want. So this is basically what we're going to do for any alpha you want to use in Substance. So what you can go ahead and just save this. I export it as a PNG, but you can export it as whatever you want, JPEG or PNG. And save it to your desktop, save it to a project folder, wherever you'd like. So let's jump back into Substance Painter and let's drag in that alpha that we just created and let's set that as an alpha to the current session. And now we have our alpha in our project. So all we have to do is just double click this alpha and it's going to automatically link it up. And then wherever we paste, we can paste our text onto our bottle or our can. So let's just increase the size a bit and let's play around with this to make it look. I need to go over a bit more. Now you may find that when you're clicking, you're getting weird. If it's moving on you, it's just because it's set up to tangent warp so I can press it in my real world and it will in this like real world space and it'll 
paste it on. But if you're just using your UVs, you can actually set this to UV. And I find you just get better results and it doesn't stretch or warp in any way. So it's a small thing if you find you're having troubles pasting on your text. Anyways, I think that looks good. I actually just want to enlarge it just a tiny bit more, maybe. Perfect. I think that's fine. We're not going to get too picky here, but I think that's okay. Actually, maybe it's too big. Sorry, I'm not trying to be picky, but sure, that works. Now let's use this exact same layer for our text below. Let's click off that alpha since we don't want it anymore. And what we can do is just click on a normal brush so we can start pasting. And what we want to do is actually go down to our alphas. And I'm going to choose one of these pre-built ones. Let's go with this guy here. And let's change the type to bold so we can thicken it up. And I'm just going to type in, I believe they're like 50 milliliters or 50 liters. I am not sure and this might not be accurate, but we just want to fill in this base to make it more interesting. So we can add a little 50 liter mark on the bottom. And let's add some words on the top. So maybe the Texas company USA. And we can scroll down and just change your size to make it smaller so it fits in this circle. Oh, not the position. Perfect, so we can use something like that. So that's looking pretty good. I guess we could probably add a bit more. Let's add that little, I'm not sure what is actually in quotes, but let's add another fill layer. Let's change this to a red font. Change that to a black mask. Let's go back to our fonts here and let's find that cursive, something cursive. And we can put that quote. They have a quote on here. I'm not sure what it is. It's S part two gelled. I have no idea what this means, but I think that's what it says. We can actually put this a bit lower. Change out the bold. Sure, that will work. What we're going to do is just double click it to make it a little bit thicker or darker in color. All right, that works, I think. It looks like actually these are not even eyes. It looks like they're like lowercase l's. I have no idea what that is. I'm just trying to copy what it is in our reference photo. Now it's good to know exactly what you're creating before you start doing this. But I mean, it just for the sake of this tutorial, it doesn't really matter too much. All right, let's say that is good to go. Now it's looking obviously quite clean right now. So let's add a color for underneath all of this. Let's go to our smart materials tab over here and I'm gonna go use a silver armor. I love this material. And what that's going to do is just fill in all the empty spaces. Now we haven't, haven't added white yet. So we only have our red on our can. So before we add that, let's add one more fill layer. Let's make this more of a white color. And just like we did to the red, we're going to do the exact same to the black. So basically all of these white areas, we are going to paint with our white color. Perfect. Now when we click on our silver armor, it's just going to fill in all the other areas of our model, top and the bottom. So I think that's looking pretty good. And you can see some of that actually come through the color, which is nice. So it doesn't look too plain anymore. And what you can do is actually go to your fill layers and you can increase that metallic if you want to make it slightly more metallic looking. It's really up to you, but this is good enough for now. We can come back and tweak things afterwards. Actually, let's just make this red 
a bit more bright, like the star color. All right, I think that's good. Let's call that okay for now. So what we wanna do is just add some grunge to this. So this is going to be, let's just group this. And this we can call our Caltex. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna take this silver armor. Let's just set it to a black mask so the metals aren't gonna be the same. And we can just set this to mesh fill instead of polygon fill and it'll just fill in that whole mesh. We can do our cap as well. So now we have our one bottle basically complete. Now it's looking obviously very clean, so we can add some dirt and grunge to this as well. So at the very top, let's add another fill layer. Let's go to our smart masks and we can basically drag on whatever we want to help add some grunge to it. So let's go maybe edge dirty. It's really up to you. No, let's go. Edge sharp, now it's too much on the back. So you just have to play around with it a bit until you find something that fits your model. So this edge dusty we're gonna use, I guess. So if we go down to the mask editor, we can drag on how much we want. And we can set our color. Let's make that nice and black, dark. And you can slowly start to build up your materials. So what I'm going to do is just make a folder for, um, let's call it just dirt. And right now this is just going to go over everything in my scene. So we can right click and set that to a black mask and we can assign this to well, really whatever we want. So we're gonna set it to here, maybe the top objects as well. Now, I personally think it's important to not rush the grunge and dirt. You probably wanna really quickly just start, you know, drastically increasing some of these sliders so you can really show, but I find if you gradually build it up, things tend to look a lot better. So what we're gonna do is add another fill layer. Let's go back and maybe add this edge damaged. And we can increase this a bit. Let's go to the color. Let's drag that all pretty close to dark. And that looks nice. It looks like some more dirt marks on there. So we can just keep doing this basically and slowly building it up. And you find, I find the more you do this, uh, the better it really looks in the end. I love this leaks one. This is a really nice one, dirt leaks. And you get those drips effect. And that looks pretty awesome. So we're just gonna leave it as is and I'm just gonna drag this to more of a dark color. Now that's way too dark on the sides, at least in my opinion. So let's go back to, so this one has two, there's the actual leaks and then there's this masking build effect. So let's go to that one. Let's drag that level down. We don't want that as strong. I think that's good. That's pretty fine for now. What I do want to add though, is something very subtle, like soft dirt. Or let's see the spots, spots might be nice. Instead of making these black, we're actually just going to keep them slightly gray. A little bit brighter. Uh, let's actually add some color, it's maybe a bit brown. There are those gray marks, this says act as more dirt. I find if you get variation of color, sometimes it looks, helps to make it look nice. And we can actually do that once again. And let's add maybe, actually, you know what? Let's add the spots again. Let's go down and change the seeds so they're in different positions. And we can keep these ones a little bit lighter, like some sort of white that's on it. Maybe we can just drag it down a bit. That looks nice. So if you want to act, maybe these little white dots are actually like the metal that's poking through. You can use a lot of cool things like anchor points. And I don't use a lot of anchor points, but this is just a really quick way. We can actually change this and drag down the height slider. So now those are showing indents into the material. 
but I don't want this to show on the lid. I only want it to be on here. So we're going to drag this out of our dirt layer and I'm going to give this its own folder. And I can right click black mask and set it only to the front here. So it's not showing up on the top. And then let's just drag up the metallic all the way and let's make this a little bit brighter. So this is going to act as like the metal that's underneath. So there's a little bit of bump to some of these holes and it looks like it's just worn through the label and it's showing the material under. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I actually like slowly looking like a worn out, kind of like an old can of paint or sorry, oil. So what we want to do is add maybe a bit more to the whole object, some up here. So let's add a little bit more. Let's play around with maybe the moisture. That's another cool one. Maybe we can add moisture as well. Let's add that into our dirt folder. I want it to really look beaten up and dirty. And we can come back to these, but I think this is going to be fine for now. The only problem is... Eh, no, that should be fine. The silver armor is showing on the other one, so that's just because we have that selected as well. So let's just unselect the other objects. All right, so we have our can of paint. So that's just a really quick way of doing it. Now let's move on to these back ones. I want to do these ones a bit different. So what we want to do is start off with another fill layer. And let's make this one more like the green castrol that we have. So I did the exact same process, found the image online. And we're going to choose a green color. Now it's going to be off to start. So let's just throw something in. And we can right click so that to a black mask. And let's just select this whole object and we can fill those. Actually, let's control Z that, sorry. Let's go back to that. Instead of doing the whole mesh fill, we want to actually do a UV chunk fill since we only want to add it to these middle UV pieces that we have. And that looks cool. So, I mean, it's starting. We have some of that information carrying over from this. So what we can do is just actually unselect that. So all I'm doing here is just choosing this. And if you slide the, dragger, uh, the slider down to zero, you can actually unselect it from objects. So I just unselected it from this object. So it's only showing on the first one. All right, so back to our Castrol. We're going to add another fill layer similar to how we did the other one. I'm going to drag in my Castrol logo that I have. And I'm going to set this to a texture to the current project. Let's go down to the projection tool like last time. Let's get rid of our other logo and our, let's add our new logo. Once again, I'm just going to set a little dot on here just to help me pos help position or figure out where exactly I need these. And we can start just like drawing in the logo. Now, like I said, just like before, things tend to change so we're actually going to slide it over. Let's enlarge it a bit. Let's re-add that logo. That looks pretty nice. I think that's going to work. So let's just finish drawing it in. Now my logo is a little bit pink there for some reason. So. So that logo is clearly not correct. So what I'm going to do is just drag in another one. I'm just going to delete that layer. Let's re-add a layer. Sometimes you just got to mess around with it until it gets looking correct. So this one doesn't have that extension. There we go. And that little piece that was sticking on the bottom. So that looks better. So now I want to add the logo on this one on both sides. So let's 
go back to this. Let's switch this over. Let's find roughly the middle. Where is that? It's over here. And that's obviously way too big. So let's zoom in. This is just a really quick way of doing it. I know there's going to be others that might have a easier way, but this is just a quick way of finding logos online and just dragging them in. And then later on, what you can do is just basically you can add levels to this if you want to make it, you know, rougher or darker, you can easily do that. So let's go back to our fill layer. We can edit this color to match our logo a bit better. Trying to figure out where a bit more blue, something like that, maybe. That looks pretty good. All right, so there's more words on our logo here. So what we want to do is add another fill layer, similar to how we did the other one before. We're going to leave this one white. We can change that to a black mask. Let's go down to our alphas over here. Scroll down, let's pick another alpha. There's really not that many to work with. So we are actually going to, let's jump back into our Photoshop and I'm going to recreate the other one that's on there. So this one just says two stroke self mixing. So let's drag that in. Let's get rid of our other one. We can delete that. And I want the gap to be a little bit smaller. So basically we can just drag this. A hundred, no, let's go 110. Hmm. Something like that. I think that will work. So let's go file, just like we did before, PNG. And I'm just gonna set that to my desktop. So now I can go back into my scene. Let's go grab that alpha that I just created and we can drag that right into our project. Set that as an alpha current session. And once it shows us where it is, let's double click it in brush mode. And we can just start painting on our text. So let's do something like that. That looks good. Let's just make it more of a white color. And there's more words on the bottom. So what we're going to do is just use the built-in ones because I don't feel like going back into Photoshop. So let's go back to our alphas and we can scroll down and let's just choose one of these texts similar to the other one that we used. Change that to bold. And this one says the masterpiece of oils. Pretty broad statement. The masterpiece in oils. Anyways, we can just set that down and let's do it something like that. Let's do it to both sides. All right, that looks cool. Now, I did notice how. Let's go back to this layer. Let's go back. And there's a small little label on the sides. Like right around here. So we can add a very small logo. It might look cool. What do you think? Maybe let's move it to the right and let's go up a bit. Yeah, I think that looks cool. We'll leave the other side blank. 
And let's add some more to the metal. Now, I don't want to have the exact same metal. Let's pretend this is a different type of metal that's on here. So we're going to go to the bottom. Let's just actually create a folder for our cans. It's good to stay organized. Castrol. It just it should be capitalized like the other ones for no specific reason, but cool. So in this castle can, let's go to a smart materials and let's try the iron old. This might be a little bit much, but that looks kind of cool. It's a little strong. So let's play around with this a bit. Let's bring the normal down. Let's bring the height range down. That looks kind of cool. Let's do that. And we have to right click, set that to a black mask, and let's select all of these objects. Perfect. All right, now similar to how we did the other ones, we need to start adding some dirt. So let's add another fill layer. Let's go over to our masking tab. And similar to how we did the other ones, we are going to do the same, but we're going to add maybe some different ones. So it looks not the same. I like that scratched one, actually, that looks cool. So let's use this. Let's go change that color to black. So we have some nice scratches or grease marks, maybe a little bit brighter. And let's add a layer to that. So then I can right click it to do a black mask and I only want it to assign to this area. So let's go to UV chunk fill and let's assign it only to here. I don't want the top to be like that. And let's add another one in here and maybe let's go dust wind. I don't know. Let's try some. Well, that's kind of cool. This might work well if we just adjust these layer uh, these levels. So let's drag that down a bit. And let's make this like a brown. That's nice. So there's a little brown color texture on there. And let's just basically keep going. Let's add another fill layer. Maybe add hmm, some edge scratch. Mm, too much. This could be cool. Let's lower some of this though. Let's make this one really dark black. Let's bring up the metallic. And for this black one, let's just add a tiny bit of height to it. Let's bring dig that in a little bit. So it looks like it's actually into the material a tiny bit. All right, so that looks cool. Let's just add some more to the top because it looks too clean. So maybe edge. Let's see. No. Dust plastic, maybe moisture. Mm. We can go heavy leak, maybe. Wow. And we're going to change the color again as well to make it dark. So we're just basically adding different grunge effects onto it. Now, let's add our bump on our lid. So this one was our high poly one. This one was our lower poly one. So we don't actually have that bump. So that's something that we do have to add. So what we can do is add a fill layer. Let's turn off all those channels. We only need our height channel. Let's go over to our textures tab over here and scroll to the very, very bottom and you're going to find a stripes pattern. So let's drag that onto our height. Let's scroll up and tile this down very small. Let's change the rotation so it lines up nice with our can. And this is why it's important to have your UV straight so these can actually be nice and, you know, giving that effect. 
So let's right click, so that to a black mask. And this time we're just gonna go face fill. We only want to basically do these specific edges, the ones that are just over here. So what we're gonna do is just select all of these, depending on where we want it to go to. And that's looking just a little bit big, so let's increase those and let's drag the height slider down a bit so it's not so strong. And that looks cool, so we can add that bump effect. And we can come back and edit it afterwards. I'll we'll just leave it like that for now. And it looks like the top is really eaten up on this can. So let's add another fill layer. Let's go back to our masks. And let's add some of this concrete. Let's just mess around with some of these. This one's nice because it looks pretty beaten up. So what I'm going to do is just drag this over to like a really dark color, drag up that metallic so it's really shiny and dark. And let's add a fill layer for this. And we can right click set it to a black mask just like before. But this time we're only going to set it to our top object. So let's go to UV chunk fill and let's set it to the top and the caps. Cool. So let's go back and make this maybe a bit more of a brown. That could be cool. All right. So it's coming together slowly. So we're going to have to come back and continuously just keep adding things to our scene to make it look good. Maybe scratches. That actually looks kind of cool. Now I don't want it all along the edge, so what we can do is turn down that curvature almost all the way. And then we can just change this color. Turn up the metallic so it really shows the roughness. And actually let's add some bump to that. Let's go a little bit of height. Now let's go back and let's remove more from the curvature. I don't really want it on the actual outside. Let's go back to this one. I don't like how it's, there's just a lot on the edge, so. Let's remove some of that. That looks better. So obviously this is something you just have to come play around a lot with until, you know, it looks more accurate or more like however you want it to look like. But you get the idea. So let's go back to our iron really quickly. I just want to change the color, make it a bit darker. Cool, so we have our two Castrol oil cans. So let's go, let's unhide these and let's move on right now just so we can continue our scene. Let's go to our small cans. So this is basically gonna be the same process over and over again, but this time we're gonna do something different. I thought it'd be fun to maybe take, I basically found this texture online and it's just of an oil can and this is another way you can add texture. So you just don't have to add specific logos. If you find a nice orthographic or relatively straight image, you can actually just drag those directly into your project, set that as a texture, just like we did before, current session. And this time we're gonna use this as our, so let's change this, our caps are on. Let's go to the projection tool and let's drag that on to our scene. So this is going to be, which can should we make it? Maybe this, let's make it this front one. So this is gonna be a bit different because it's not actually sized correctly to this. So we'll have to wing it a bit and play around with the shape until it looks kind of accurate to how we want it to look. So we want this to be the front. Yes enlarge it so it takes up almost all of the room and it's upside down so let's just rotate that around it does help if you know the direction of your uvs so i should have checked that in maya but 
It's all good. To be honest, I think this will just do. Perfect. That looks cool. Let's do that. Oh, it's like a tiny bit over. Let's control Z what we did. And we want it to be centered for sure. Because that will definitely throw off the realism if it's not aligned relatively accurately. And then we can just paint these in. So let's just go ahead and paint this. Now this back label, I want it to line up properly. So right now, if I just paste it over it, it'd be like half on the side. We don't want that. So we're going to have to just kind of mess around with it a bit. So we're going to slide this over. And I'm going to do the label over. Let's make sure, let's get this label lined up. So that looks good. So what I'm going to do is just fill this in. Bear with me here for a sec. We don't want to recreate the tail. So let's just keep dragging that in. Just line that back up. We can get rid of that tail. And you just basically got to just play around with it until things start looking good. It's definitely more tedious for sure, but the more you play around with it, the better it's gonna look. And this is obviously, you know, it's, it's better if you have an actual like material to work with, like something that's lined up better than the, how this one's lined up, but it's an old can so we can kind of get away with it. Now this side's gonna be a bit tricky, but Let's see what we can do. So let's fix that. Get rid of the letter. And we just have this last strip. So what we can do is bring that strip over here. It might be too dark. It's probably gonna be too dark. So let's go back to this side. And what we're gonna do is color it in. All right, it's almost there. We just messed up this little area. And these numbers we don't want. Cool. So that's just another way you can do it. And there tends to be like a black line almost down this. So what we can do is just actually just add a fill layer, make it really simple. Go over to our brushes. Let's add a soft brush. And we can just drag a line, make it black, make it rough. Something like that. Let's make it metallic. And what you can do is just, it's slightly going onto the edge here, so we can just switch that down and click them off. Cool. So similar to how we did the other ones, we need to now add some sort of material. It's looking very flat, so we need something under it. So let's go back to our smart materials and we can go back to, let's say that iron forged. That's kind of cool. Actually, I like the black. Or let's just hide that. Maybe the iron old will be nice because it's pretty beaten. I have an idea, we're gonna use both. So let's use iron old on the sides here because I like the bump that it gives. So let's go back and let's just drag this down a bit. I want it so bumpy. And the normal, something like that, that looks cool. And we can right click set that to a black mask. And just like we did before, we are only going to set it to this UV chunk, the middle part. And then for everything else, well, this can just be right under. Let's right click, that to black mask. 
And let's just fill in these other objects. We have this, we have the lid. Cool, and we have our other can. I actually like how this one looks. Now we have this little label up here. So what we could do is just go down, find like a, we'll use leather. It's not even gonna look like leather, probably look like an old sticker. Basically what I'm trying to go for is that old, that old look that the stickers have. Let's pretend it's like a price sticker so we can add another fill layer. Change that to a black mask. Let's go to our, maybe like a marker texture. This could be cool. Let's pretend that we added maybe like, Maybe that's too much here. Marker, let's do this. Cool, we can just add some sort of, you know, pretend it's there. And if you want to actually add a little bit more detail, we can go back to our smart materials. I know this fabric flannel has a really nice wave pattern to it. So let's just drag that flannel pattern in. Let's open it, grab the folding effect, copy. We can hide that layer. And you can just come up to the top here and just paste. And what that's going to do is just add that folding effect into our texture here, but we don't want it to be crazy because it's not like it's you know, wrink, super wrinkly, but it just adds a tiny bit more realism. Obviously there's a little things you can adjust and play around with, but let's just go with that. So before anything, let's just save. I haven't saved it yet. Substance, knock on wood, never crashes. So our third can is now complete. Now, as you can see, it's going on to this, so we need to basically just right click, set that to a black mask, just so we can choose only that object we want to assign it to. And then there's still something else appearing on this guy. What is it? It's probably this. So we can add a black mask. And I want to assign it only to this object. Perfect. So there's nothing else on that one. And this can, let's just delete the flannel. We don't need it anymore. Let's group all of these together. And we can call this our small can one. Perfect. All right, so we have a third, or a fourth can maybe, fifth. But what we're gonna do for this one is just, let's do it like our shell. So let's be a fun little shell one maybe. So what we're gonna do is just add a fill layer. Let's make this kind of like a yellow color-ish, maybe like that. Like I said, you can always adjust these afterwards, so don't stress, let's just get something in the scene, basically. So I just wanna fill in this one area, not the top. And Let's see, so there's another fill layer. It's like a red color. Put that to a black mask. And this one can be... Just like the bottom few, it looks like, I think. Something like that. And let's add once again, actually let's increase this red color. It's not bright enough. Let's add one more fill layer. This will be a yellow, a shell yellow color. Now if you want this to be really accurate, you can figure out what colors these logos and companies actually use. But, you know. Cool, let's do that. That looks nice. And there's a tiny little strip actually on the very top. So what we're gonna do, let's just actually redo that. If you want that strip. But I'm gonna go to my eraser tool. We're going to choose a hard edge. 
and I'm just going to basically just erase a small line across the top. Cool. So that looks like our shell can. Now the red needs to be definitely brighter. I think both colors do. So let's increase the red. Let's increase the yellow. And now we can add our labels. So let's add another fill layer. Actually, let's, yeah, sure. It looks like a red color. So let's add them. And once again, it's not, I don't think any of these logos are gonna work. So let's quickly jump into Photoshop. And let's just, oh, I didn't even realize our logo was actually wrong. Is that funny? So we'll have to fix that later on. Mixing F, oh well. See, when you're rushing things, you guys probably noticed that during the video and I just didn't even notice it, but what we can do is just find where those logos are. Now you can redo it uh, to make life easy. It's not gonna be perfectly lined up anymore, so. My OCD will be upset, but you know, it is what it is. So next up on our list is going to be the shell one that we're continuing on. So let's go back to our small cans and let's add, we have our label texture ready. So once again, jumping back into Photoshop, let's go ahead and erase these and we can call this one shell. And then let's just manually drag another one lower and we can just outboard motor oil. And this is smaller. This is actually roughly the same size it looks. Just something like that maybe. That will probably be fine. Let's increase our shell logo. What do you think? Shell, outboard, motor oil. Make sure our swelling's right this time. And let's just decrease the fun. Sure, this will find, it'll do, it'll do. So let's go file, export. All right, so jumping over to substance once again, we can go and load in our shell logo alpha, change it to an alpha, to our current session. And then we can just double click that as long as we're actually on our brush. Let's enlarge it. And it's rotated for some reason, so let's just change this to zero. And let's place this one like here. What do you think? Some of them like that. Let's double click it a bunch. Shell upward motor oil. That's pretty good. And what's on the side? Actually, what we're going to do, this one looks pretty plain, so I think what we're gonna do is just increase this color more, make it darker. Metallic, let's make it a little dark. And we have our shell logo. So similar to how we did the other ones, I basically just found this logo in online. So. Actually, I can show you. So what I'm going to do is, is open with Photoshop. And we are just going to select our background and I'm just going to delete it. So we only have our shell logo. Let's go export just because there's no background. You're going to see we'll just have to erase around it. Now there's other ways we can do this, but this is just a really, really quick way. We have our logo. So let's drag that in, set that as a texture to our current session. Let's add another layer for our logo. Go to the projection tool, double drag this onto our base color. And we can find where our logo goes. So this logo kind of goes over this. It looks like something like that. That's nice. Let's just do it like that. Sure. It's relatively centered. It doesn't really matter. Now the thing is, it's looking a bit bright. So like I mentioned before, you can right click it and go add 
a filter, or sorry, add levels. And we can just darken our whole shell logo to match our bottle more. All right, so let's go back to our logo and I'm gonna add a tiny one on the side here. And that's way too big. <laughs> I think that looks fine. And let's maybe add one on the other side as well. And it's a little crooked, so let's go over. We're a little off to the right. And that's good enough. Cool. So similar to all of the other ones on our scene, it's looking way too clean. So what we're gonna do is add a metal underneath, just like we did before. So maybe let's go with the, uh, I like that iron forge, to be honest. It was nice and black on the top. I kind of like that. So I'm going to leave that like this. So let's just add that as a black mask and object fill. Let's just click on our objects. But I like how it looked with the iron underneath. Mm -hmm. So let's drag that into our layers and we can go back just like before and adjust those parameters just to bring down that height range in the normal so it's not so bumpy. We'll make this one actually a little bit less than the other one. Something like that. And let's right click black mask. And this time, you probably guessed it, UV chunk fell off. You only wanna do it to this middle UV. Cool. Now that's still obviously looking quite uh, clean. So let's go to the very top and let's add a layer. Go over to the masks similar to how we did the other ones before, and let's start dragging on some dirt. So this one looks nice. Let's add a layer, black mask. We only want to add it to our middle. I want it on the top. We can add some greasy marks. Let's add another one. Maybe let's add that dirt again. I really like the dirt leak. It tends to look pretty cool. Obviously that's quite a bit. So let's drag it back. Crunch, where is it here? Oh, it's this guy, that's why. I'm doing the wrong one. There we go. And let's drag this down to like black. I want to show these little nicks and dirt. That looks cool. Let's add another one. And you guessed it. Let's just keep on adding. So this one, let's make it really metallic. That'd be kind of cool. Like there's a metallic poking through. I like that. Add another fill there. Maybe some scratches. I mean, it really depends on how you want it to look. But. That looks cool. Let's go back to that beige and let's just brighten that up. Let's make it a little more white. There we go. It's coming along. Now, what we're going to do on this shell one for fun is go to our. We are going to add a layer, black mask, go over to my brushes. And similar to how we did the other one, I'm gonna to go to marker and we can basically just write on whatever we want. So this one I'm gonna go, oh, make sure you're in brush, not erase. <laughs> and let's just do the same thing. Let's say they're all seven. I cannot, it's hard doing this with the mouse. 
so bear with me. Let's do this one as like a blue marker. Be kind of cool, but to make it look more realistic because it looks too clean. Let's go to like a dirt. Go to the eraser tool. And let's just like very, we can drag down the flow so we don't completely destroy it. Yeah, that's too much. Like something like that. Looks like it's kind of worn off a little bit, but that looks cool. All right, so we're getting there. We just have a few more to do. So let's jump over to this large, let's jump over to our grease cans. Now I'm gonna use the exact same grease can that is in our other one from the same Caltex company to make it similar. So let's kind of do the exact same thing. So what I'm gonna actually do is go to our large can. I want the reds to be similar because they're the same brand. So let's add that. This is our red and our white. So let's copy those and we can go to our grease cans and let's paste them. Now I might just like randomly add things to your scene. So what we're gonna do is just put the color slider down to zero and let's just deselect it from everything, both. So we have no white. Nothing is assigned. So now when I go through, I can actually assign certain faces. So we want the top half of our I believe it's the top half, yeah. To be white, and then the bottom half is going to be red. Oh. That looks cool. And then let's start just adding our logo. So I want the logo to be on this side so we can see it. So very similar to how we did the other one. Let's add another layer. Let's go find our... Sure. Go find our logo. And we want to add it right here. I'm a little bit smaller. Just like so. That might work. It's almost too big. I think it's still too big. So we're going to zoom in and make it even smaller. There, that's better. And now over this one, there's a couple of things it says. So I think we're going to have to, let's go back into our Photoshop and let's create another. We can come back to these. We want to use the same font, so that actually works. But this one is going to be Aviation Grease. I have no idea what Aviation Grease even is. I'm curious what they would use it for, but I think that makes sense. Now let's add a bigger space between these because a reference to showing it a little bigger. Something like that I think will work. What do you think? Let's try it. So let's export and call it maybe Grease. Let's go back into our Substance project. Let's find that logo, drag it in, set it to an alpha, to the current session. And let's add, oh. Don't want to remove that. Let's call that logo. Let's add another fill layer for our text. And we're going to actually do this twice because there's one for one's red and one's black. So let's first just add our black one in. So let's double click. Get our text nice and big. And let's make sure that we are on UV because it's going to be wrapping around. We don't want to mess it up. 
Now, this happens sometimes where it just decides to, I don't even know why, but change your flow jitter, angle jitter, position jitter, remove all of that down, and it should fix it for you. All right, so let's put our big Caltex. It's kind of lower, actually, it looks like. It's like, something like that. Now this is gonna be like a dark red. Now do you see how it's warping? We don't want that. So if you go UV, you're not gonna get that stupid little warp <laughs> that happens. So that looks cool. Let's go ahead and change this color to like a red, like a dark red. And then let's add another fill layer to a black mask. We can basically go in the same position as this was. And I'll show you why. So what we're gonna do is just change this one to black. we can erase it from the top logo. So let's change our brush. And then we can go down and remove that so there's no background. There we go, so we have Caltex Aviation Grease. Cool. Now there's little words on the bottom, so let's just, maybe the Texas Company USA, we'll do the same thing. So let's go into our black layer here. Let's go to alphas. Let's go choose one of these. And put it to bold and let's write the same thing. Let's go in caps, the Texas company USA. Change the size so it's small, so it fits into our little circle. And it's on UV so it doesn't warp. Once again, I'll show you just so you're aware, but if I do that, yeah, it's so small in our scene that you can't really tell. It'll start like bending your text. So if you're pasting it on your UV, you should switch it to UV. All right, and that's perfect. Let's just call that our aviation grease. do a shot from here but I like that logo so I might switch this like angle it and re-import re it we'll see anyways we do need to change the top this is looking obviously way too clean so let's just continue on let's add a let's go back to our smart materials and maybe an iron uh, let's do this grease one again I like this it's fitting I, I feel Let's go black mask and let's just fill it in on that object and on our lid. Cool. So that's looking much better. Obviously it's still very clean. So we need to start adding some grunge specifically around those edges. So let's try some edge rust. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's kind of cool actually. Let's change this to black. A real thing that you will notice are happy mistakes. If you just by guessing things, you're like, oh, damn, that looks good. I'm going to go with that. So just experiment and you'd be surprised. Sometimes it just works really well. So I'm just looking for a nice, greasy kind of something that fits it nice. So we're going to go through all of these. I'm just controlling Z and kind of just dragging new ones on. You can manually go in with your brush and do, you know, add those details, but I feel like this will be nice. Okay, so this is a nice little, it adds a lot of black around those edges and I actually want that. So you can actually add that global balance. I want it really dark along the top. In on the bottom, actually, that looks cool. I like that effect. 
What do you think? Too bad I can't hear what you think, but I think that looks good. So let's just keep adding maybe a bit of rust. Yeah, I like the rust. But let's just drag this way down. So we only have a couple pieces and we can add a little bit of color to those ones. And let's keep going. It still looks obviously too clean. So let's go paint old. And what I'm gonna do actually is add this one into a folder just like we did before. This is gonna be all textures that are just specifically on this middle piece, not on the top or bottom. And then we can just drag that nice and dark. And let's add another one into here. So maybe we'll add from the ground. Eh. I kind of want it from the top again. Let's see, let's see. Cavities. So this will be interesting. I want a little bit of color on that, on the edge there. So you can see a little bit of brown in that as well, but I want this to be very rough. Just adding these small details is slow, you know, it slowly builds up over time. You just gotta keep doing it. Add that dirt leak because I like that leak. I'm gonna remove this one. Actually, this might be nice. Let's see what it's like. adds a lot more to it. I want it to look pretty gnarly, right? So it looks like it's been used a bunch. Now there's other cool things we can do. So, I mean, I can keep going and going, but we're gonna add, let's try this. Let's add a fill layer. Let's go to this textures tab. Actually, let's add, it's called leak. And where is it? So it's in your brushes and it's a leak effect. So let's change this to a black mask. We can change this later on to whatever we want. But basically you can just select a spot and it will just drag, depending on how many wants of spawn speed. Let's go down. Can't really see it, so let's change it to black. So it'll create these like drip effects. So what we want to do, you have to play around with these settings to make it look you know, more accurate to whatever you had in mind. But just like a one, so let's, create, let's bring that up maybe. So depending on how big you want your leaks to be, you can just do a couple of you can go where is it? So 
So you can basically just keep adding details and you can play around with that, the physics of it, like how heavy you want them to drop if you wanted, but I'm just gonna maybe just do a couple. That's too much. That's fine. Less is always more. Anyways, that's pretty good. Let's say that's fine. Let's move on to our last can over here. Now the problem is, is that all of those textures carried over. So what we're going to do is just group all of this into one group. Oh, we want to add that to a black mask and select this specific shape. Cool. So we have our last can. I'm not sure what we're going to do for this one. What? Maybe we'll do one of these... Obert, I don't know. Castrol, what do we want to do here? Maybe we'll do one of those BNAs. So, have this BNA like the other reference we were using. Let's just basically, let's just continue doing the same thing. So we're going to do a fill layer. I am going to make this more of a white as our base. black mask and I can just fill in that middle texture so now there's like a green strip I believe on this one so let's add another fill layer let's go change this to more of a green color like a dark it's like a really dark green I believe right click black mask set that to faces and we can just basically select some of these middle faces that we want Something like that. That's actually pretty cool. Now that's a little too dark, maybe. I don't know. You can come back to all these colors, but let's just do it like that. And then looks like it almost needs to be like that. I don't know. Eh, it'll be fine. It will work. So what we're going to add here is some text. So we can add a black mask. Let's go see if we can just use any of the text that comes with substance. Might not look that great, but let's try it. So double click, bold. Let's just see what it looks like. Eh, not happy with it. So we're gonna go to Photoshop once again and let's change these. So this, our alpha is going to say, Outboard. And that's going to be an aerial in black. So let's just make this fit. And then our smaller text underneath it is going to say motor oil. We want this to be more bold. That looks better. And let's just drag this to be a bit smaller. Let's say something like that. That looks cool. All right, sure. So let's go export all whatever you want. Let's go back into our substance scene and let's drag in that alpha into our project, call, set it as an alpha into the current session. And like all the other ones, double click it and we can basically enlarge it. So once again, since we're doing it under UV, our alignment needs to be UV and we can just basically, actually that might be fine. Have the logo a little bit to the side. What do you think? Maybe a little bit over here. Yeah, let's do it there. We just need to make our font a little bit more white. 
or a lot more white. And we need to add our logo. So once again, found the logo online. So set that to a texture, to our current session. Let's add a layer. Let's go to our projection tool. Let's replace our Caltex logo with our BA logo. And this is going to fit somewhere here, I believe. So all I'm doing is just moving it up a bit. That looks nice. What do you think? BA motor oil. And then on the bottom, let's... Um, now, I don't know what they say, so let's just look. Um, I just wanted to find something that said something about the company. Sometimes they have like little sayings on their bottles, and I just wanted to add an extra little text here on the bottom. So, what we can do is very similar to how we did before. Go to our textures. Let's choose this one. Bold. And it's going to say... The British American Oil Company Limited. It might be too long to fit. Might have to do this in, um, oh, no, it should work. Okay, so let's go back over here and let's just paste this on the bottom. Let's go regular. Cool, that looks good. Now we need to just bang this thing up a lot because it's looking way too clean. So let's add for some texture to the whole bottle itself. So maybe some iron. Mm, let's add maybe some silver armor. I like the silver armor one better for this specific one to change it up. All right, so we have that done. Now we still have to basically just dirty it up a bunch because it's looking too clean. So just like the other ones, let's start adding a lot of dirt to it. kind of cool because this top one's just on the top ring so we can act as like some sort of like rust maybe that's like rusting that's nice and then maybe some dirt stained we're just experimenting with different stuff here that's nice too like a gray maybe let's add another one Let's add some spots. And let's make that metallic. So it's like metal scratch through. And maybe let's add another one. There are cavities. What do you think? No. Okay, that looks cool. Okay, so you know what? This logo though is looking maybe too bright. So let's just add levels and let's just darken it just a tad. Cool. So I like, like I mentioned before, I kind of want this to be angled a bit different. So what you can do is just jump back into your scene and you can simply just like, let's select this oil can. And 
and we can rotate it. Let's just rotate it a bit. I think that might look better. Let's try it. So what you can do is file export selection. And this is actually a good way if you're interested in making modifications to any of your scenes or anything like that, you can just create another export. Now it's always good to save before you actually do this, but if you jump back into painter, you can go file. Let's just save it. Like I said, first go edit project configuration. You can go down to select, select your new FBX that you exported and make sure your preserve strokes is on. So we can go, okay. And it's going to load in our new model. I just rotated that can. I just thought it would look a little bit better angled so we can have a nice render from the front. Cool. And let's add a couple of fun stuff. So since this is our own model that we're making, let's go to those large cans. And I always like to add personal touches if I can into my scenes. So on top of this, let's add a fill layer and let's just take everything off except for the height. And let's dr drag that height slider down. Let's set that to a black mask. And what I'm going to do is just go over to one of these fonts. There's this nice font, indie one, it's like someone's writing. And I'm just going to write poly render. Like I said, I like to add some sort of like personal touch if you can into it, just to make it interesting. So let's maybe add Or instead of that, let's just do, it's too obvious. So what we're gonna do, let's go p.r. We can make it a little larger. And crooked, nothing's ever straight, right? So we can add that in, make it a little scratched up. Cool, add a little pr on there. And, now you know what, looking too clean. So what we're actually gonna do, actually I like that idea. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do, but let's add poly render. Let's make the height zero. Let's add some color to it. Make it like a, like a marker. To make it a little more metallic. There we go, a little PR on the top for poly render. Just little things you can do to help make it more interesting. The little tiny details go such a long way and you can add like, like stickers if you like. Just, anyway, it's just really endless, but I think that's fine. What do you think? So, Things are looking good, except for our cap over here. I didn't realize, and our small cans. So let's go back to our small cans. And let's get this iron old. And let's assign it to that cap. Oh. Which one is on? Oh, one sec. That's fine, there it is, it's over here. Nice. So now that things are looking pretty good, let's jump into our renderer. So up in the modes, go to renderer. Now there's a few small things I like to do. Um, one thing is just move off the background. I know it helps make, it can make the models look good, but I want to use this outside of substance and I don't want to just be it can influence how your model looks. Let's just move our ground to be close. And I also like to usually change my my focal length. So it automatically comes in pretty low at 17. Now 50 is more like real eyesight, but I feel like if we maybe go to 35, 
give it a little bit more of a bubbly look. And let's go to our camera. Now there's different cameras you can use depending on I don't know, how what you're trying to get it to look like, but maybe something like this. Panorama did look good. Anyways, that is basically everything. Now we can just, you know, tech. Like another little thing that actually just jumps out to me is like this Texas company, it's looking so clean. So another little small detail that can go a long way is just go back into your cans. Let's find out this Texas company one down here. And then we just wrote, I believe it's one of these. This one, which one is it? You can go through and label these so you don't have to do what I'm doing to figure out what's what, but let's go to your eraser tool and you can choose. I, I always go to dirt for some reason, maybe it's just habit, but bring your flow down and you can just slowly, very subtly erase some, just a tiny bit. So it looks more a little doesn't look so perfect because especially like this would be sc almost scratched off right something like that that looks cool and then our logo as well you can do the same thing so you can go through and just oh not paint, <laughs> but erase. No, it looks too much, too much. Cool. So you can go back in and jump back and forth between the renderer. I always tell people that like this is probably the one of the most important things. And as you can see, our line actually moved on our can when we moved our object. So let's jump back to our small cans. And sometimes when you move things, you know, things can get moved around. So let's just go through and erase this line. And we want to add that here. And similar to how we did it before, we're just going to remove it from the top and bottom texture. Oh, no, we don't want that. Cool. Now, when we jump into our renderer, things are looking better. So I think that looks good. There's obviously a couple things that could change. Like, for example, you know, you always jump in and you can find little things. So like this logo, for example, let's jump back to our large cans. It's looking just so bright because it's just just taken right off Google and it's like a really clear image. So you can right click, set a levels to that and you can just drag that like we did before, drag the, make it a little darker so it fits in more with the materials. It doesn't pop out so much. You can honestly do that with all the whites. So like the white on this can too is just like super white. Let's just just bring that down like the littlest bit. And it'll just help blend it in. Now, if you export this or you just save your render as a PNG, it will be just a transparent background, which personally I want because I can then later on change whatever background I want. I just find it gives me a little bit more control but you can play around with these lightings. They're going to give you different feels and moods depending on how you want it to look. That kind of looks cool too. But that's up to you as the artist to decide what you think looks best and how you want your models to be portrayed. 
Anyways, I really hope you guys learned possibly a thing or two along this journey, but that's basically everything. That is the whole 3D modeling, UV mapping, and texturing process that I did to create these old oil and grease cans. Also, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. I'm a one-man team over here, so your subscription would go a very long way in helping me out and also fight against this whole algorithm thing, and hopefully I can share this video with more people. You can also hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when my next video is uploaded. I also want to give a really big thank you to all of my Patreons. Your support goes an extremely long way in helping support this channel and its growth, and I really can't thank you all enough. I'm super grateful for all of your support. And if you're not part of my Patreon page and you want to help in a bigger way and also get access to additional files like working files, 3D models, and Patreon-specific tutorial videos, all of that you can find on my Patreon page, and I will link that in the description below. Anyways, thanks so much for tuning into this week's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one.